Questions for Ed? We've got a few minutes. Lunch is here early. We're good for that. Um, so that system of identifying is, is great for mechanical subsidies. Um, yeah, that's just such a great practice. What can be done for using parts of a record, of a data record, you know, to identify, say, for example, similar collections? So for linking, instead of duplicates, linking collection amounts. So there is a lot of findings you can get to the base instead of the collection options. And then capture that data. So are you saying for data entry? So the dupe feature there actually, if it doesn't find an exact dupe by matching the collector with the number and or the date, it'll actually look for a similar collection event. And the way it does it in this system now is that it actually looks, tries to say, look for, if you just have a date, it'll pull up all the events for that collector on that date. And then it just has a list and you can actually choose which one you want to use. Um, so that's what's being implemented now. Now there's a lot of different possibilities. So one thing we want to do with, we're working with OCR and the National Language Group is, so we're I'm writing a uh, uh, um, web service. So they could actually, if they do the OCR and parsing and they're only able to get the collector, the date, and the number, they could send that information in. They don't look for a duplicate collections or duplicate events with that information and then create a consensus record of all the possible matches. And it might actually, so you might actually get several different events on the same day. But the thing is, if you also have the input of the OCR, you might go extract more information from the OCR to make a logical choice of, to rank them. And then send them back to, to whoever's application is asking for it. And then they could have a logic in there to actually do the quick selection. It's not going to be a perfect system, but the thing is, with time, this might get better and better. And specifies looking at doing the same sort of thing with SGR. At the moment, SGR is mainly for variant collections, but there are other ways in which other groups can use that information, either pieces of records or entire records. I mean, the entomology community does much the same thing. They share specimens around. And so we're looking at extending it out, um, you know, and manipulating pieces of information so that you can just get duplicate localities or collections. One collection I was working with got briar pipes. Uh, just a small question. Briar pipes wanted to get those uh, digitized and not entered anything, and no, no data. So they OCR these 4,000 briar pipe packets, sent the OCR to Ed, Ed created a portal for them. Um, and then they got three or four students who began going through that portal, a portal and, geo, and uh, basically geo referencing and also entering data right straight from that record. And then leaving the one that they couldn't figure out for the curator uh, to go back and check. So I mean, it was no, there was no other data, data out there except a picture of the label and the OCR done by Abby at that institution. Kind of so this, this was my point earlier about saying if you're not taking images, if that's, that's not what you're doing, then it's really helpful. But if you're taking pictures of uh, the part, really help. 
all together a certain theme where you're working on the same format each time. And so the point of that also is to think about is to have a workflow that involves in and just think about it. Usually, usually it depends on the detail and those kind of things. Taking images of the label, it's a lot faster to serve that label to someone and get it that label very quickly. They can get lots of those different labels and group them and organize them. So long before there's this detailed atomized data record. As you're putting together your workflows, I just want to stress something that Jill said earlier is modularity. It really works really well if you think of these different steps as separate systems that can be plugged into one another. So you don't have to look for the perfect workflow, the perfect system. You can actually design it yourself and use, okay, for my collection, this tool's going to work in this solution and this solution, so you put it together. And so keep that in mind. Uh, uh, earlier in the, your presentation, you talked about reinventing the wheel and, and um, these overlap, these, uh, some of these portals and that are becoming kind of niche specific. And, and I, I think that's fine. I mean, I don't, I don't see this reinventing the wheel. I see each of these have different strengths. And uh, just buy them and specify, they all have their different strengths. I'm wondering if, 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 we, if there's any opportunity for, so I've got my data. And I'd love to get, I'd love to put it into SysBio, EOL, iDigBio, VertNet, um, GBIF. You know, I, I want it to be out there. Is there one click I can do that with, or do I have to go to each one of these things? Is, is there anybody who's aggregating? Um, well, can just take my data and do that for me. We're, <laughs> we are solving those. We are. I think, in, like Gil said, in ten years. A lot of this is going to be worked out. However, we are in a situation where there's growing pains. You know, there's we are actually creating these systems that are networking with each other. So right now we're working on the GWT issue. Once the GWT issues out there, you know, I think Bio or Specify or Symbiota is going to be able to actually publish these things from these other networks and not be publishing duplicate instances. So these networks will be, or the networks will be able to harvest from these different instances and know when they're getting the same record. Of okay. Getting different record. So the GUID issue? Um, globally identifiers. unique identifiers. So identifier issue. And a lot, a lot of those portals feed into each other. So you can publish to one of those portals and it'll appear elsewhere. Okay, yeah. Fishnet gets all of its data, or most of its data, from Jiva. And so, you know, they all feed into each other. So all you need to do is get your data out there. And right. the aggregators will find your data and they will take it from you and put it into their portals. Okay. Uh, that's, um, I mean, that's fine. I, what, what what's, what's the easiest way into that cloud or whatever? Well, you know? One of the things that I've been trying to get somebody to do, either Vertnet or Jiva or somebody, is to publish a, a, a sort of cladogram of how all these portals fit into each other. Right. Because there is a natural progression of if you put your data in GBIT, it's automatically going to go to Fishnet and it's going to go to NDII and it's going to go here. Right. So there's a logical starting point for you to publish your data. Yeah. And it'll go from there. Yeah, yeah. And nowhere is there a sort of cladogram that says, you know, hey, if you put your data in here, like if you publish to Fishnet, you're going to get all your stuff georeferenced. Right. If you publish to GBIT, you're going to get mapping technologies and all sorts of other things. Right. So nowhere is there a cladogram that gives you an idea of what the advantages are of joining all of these portals and where your best la launching point is to get your data out there so that others can take advantage of it. Yeah. And I'd really like to see somebody do that. It's going to be something that's going to constantly change. Yeah, well, it's going to be a web. Yeah, so I think, I think in addition to that, that's the point. That's why it's important to create
bigger protocol, right? Right. So um, we have that database or an Excel spreadsheet or a CSV file. And regardless of what you have on your computer, if you have a server sitting in your office that's serving it bigger in, in a bigger format or whatever it is that's current, you know, for the next four and a half years, um, that it's essentially like a web page for every single record in your collection, right? Right. And then I mean, we, we went to that model because we also got frustrated with it, like, how do I reach and figure out all these different people? No, you have a computer that serves it in a, in a consistent format, like, in a, like just like an HTML web page. And then, yeah, that Earthmat, like Earthmat, that, you know, Qubit, and whoever else, uh, there's at one point we had a, a state brand, you know, looking at this. So we were essentially serving same piece of information to three different databases. And the nicest thing about that is I could go in into the Apache log and see all the requests for all the data, mm -hmm. rather than relying on you know the reporting from right. the or whatever. So I think that's the, the best model. Is that is yeah. that the best jumping point than a digger? Uh, I mean, because we got a digger. I mean that's claiming too, right? Um, I mean it's changing. I don't think digger digger is yeah, so Digger's kind of, you really don't want to go with Digger, that's not my Oh, technology. Right now you're trying to transition into what's known as IPT. Um, and if you're a vertebrate collection, probably the best starting point, especially if you don't have the capabilities to host it yourself, would be to contact Vertinet. And they have a KU hosted, they have a server at KU, where they'll actually host your data on IPT. So you can send them a spreadsheet, it'll be hosted on there. We have a good relationship with them, so when it gets into BERTNET, they let us know and we take it to that as well. And BERTNET will also help you get registered with GDEV. So just by going into BERTNET, you would end up getting all those networks. Now, if it's non vertebrate collections, well, I don't know how. There is, you know, go to GDEV first. Laura Russell is a contact person here for BERTNET, and she's been very helpful in getting people's databases up and running and helping them get published. So the point is that you have one, one yeah. source. Yeah, no, I'd love to have one story. Well, you publish it once and the other people will find it. Yeah, yeah right. Just publish it once. Where, where is that best place to <coughs> publish it once? Jennifer Thomas and then lunch. What? So, what I, my question is what's happening with feedback loops? Okay. I want to know if I yeah, send my data to you, that's really there. all the that's all the time I've got. I can get my data well, to I want to know if not these over there so we can hear her. Sorry. Can you start over? I'm sorry. I didn't um, to do that. So I'm just wondering what's happening with feedback loops. Because if I get my data to one place and that's all the time and energy I have for my collection data, I want to know when these other portals pick it up. <coughs> and so number one. But then number two, I want to know when my data is being gathered from GBIC or gathered from Vertnet or gathered from, for publication. Because if I can't prove that my data is being used, these projects, I mean, th these digitization projects are just going to be funded for the next five years and then go away. Yeah. There's a, there, so filter push. So there's one aspect of feedback of someone editing the data and other things, networking those changes or the edits and comments. Filter push is working at creating a solution there. So that's one type of solution. The other, other aspects is, you know, the, Google Network's pretty powerful once we have yeah. WIDs, if you type a like WID, yeah. you get actually references to everything that's being, that's using, that's publishing that data. Now, I don't, there's no one perfect system yet, and there are definitely holes in there that need to be worked for solutions, but I think it's just happening. It's not that the collection managers need any more work, so but it's I understand. Then the second part. They have quick response and then we're going to work. Thank you. 
searches they've done, what data they've downloaded, all of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. GBIP does it, Fishnet does it. More saying the supply is EOL. I get reports from EOL now. Yeah. I just know from looking at some of your fish data, GBIP is serving all of these things. So your records are showing up three, four, twelve, ten times. Yeah, so GBIP is a little, um, they're probably the worst when it comes to data quality. <laughs> 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 Thank you for a really great morning of presentations. Go eat them.